truly. Hello and happy new year. Welcome to 2022 on Molly Brooks YouTube channel. I am very excited to have you here with me for a typical Molly Rambles video. I'm actually excited about this because I feel like often when I do my Molly Rambles videos, it's like a heavy topic or a negative topic. And I guess like in ways this is heavy, but I'm not emotional. Like I'm in a really good place sitting down and chatting about this with you guys. And that feels really good. And I, I'm actually filming this on New Year's Day. Today is January 1st. Your girl is not hungover. I've decided that's a great way to start every year for the rest of my life. So I'm really hoping that's a change I can implement in the future is going into every New Year's Day not hungover. It's a good vibe. I highly recommend. But I just feel filled with like sunshine and color. Quite literally feeling filled with color. Uh, I mean, that's a change. Orange is my least favorite color and here I am wearing orange. I've changed. Truly deep within. By the way, if you if I sound a little nasally, I just had a slight cold. Don't worry, I've tested negative for COVID multiple times. Shockingly, COVID being around doesn't mean the common cold goes away. So I do have a slight common cold. No need to worry. Your girl's all good. I was planning actually on posting this video on December 31st, so yesterday, as like my final video of 2021 but to be honest i was just really enjoying living in the moment and being with my family especially my brother and his fiance over the holidays and so i was like molly you can miss one video and that's gonna be okay and i gave myself that grace and i'm happy i did because i feel like i'm in a really good positive mindset to film this and I'm excited to film it instead of filming it because I told myself I was going to. And that's a good vibe. That's a good vibe right there to start this year off. And just a little update before I kind of launch into the real meat and potatoes of this video. I will be doing most likely one video a week during the month of January. That's a pretty usual thing here on my channel. I generally do three videos a week in December, one video a week in January, and then two videos a week every other month of the year. So. I will most likely just be uploading on Tuesdays at 12.30 PST, but you can always follow me over on Instagram and Twitter because that's where I update you guys on anything changing with my uploads. Um, and then probably in February, I'll go back to my Tuesday and Friday uploads. Tuesday Friday schedule was actually a change I implemented last year. And I used to do sa uh, Tuesday, Saturday, and I used to work like pre-pandemic, I used to work seven days a week for years. Like that was just my normal. That was a really positive change I implemented over this last year, just for my own mental health and well-being and physical health as well, was to take the weekends off. And yes, sometimes I do still work on the weekends, but overwhelmingly for the most part, I don't. And I've implemented a lot of changes over this last year of my life that have made massive difference in how I feel internally and externally. And Honestly, I've changed a lot. I, dare I say it, have had the most internal shift of my view of myself and the world this past year than I maybe ever have in my entire life. And I don't know if it's apparent to you guys watching as my viewers, like if you've been able to see the shift and change in who I am as a person, but it is certainly apparent to me and it's certainly apparent to those in my everyday life. And I feel really good. And I just want to talk about it because I feel like I often sit down and tell you guys about my mental health when I'm not in a good place. And I'd love to share with you guys why I am in a good place and some of the things that have shifted internally within me that, I don't know, might help you guys, might inspire or motivate some of you going into this new year. I feel like a lot of people do this whole new year do me thing and try to implement a lot of self-care and wellness changes into their life. These are some of the things that have changed a about me that I, I'm proud of. And I wanna sit down and reflect and share with you going into 2022. I feel like we often say things like, you've changed as like a super negative thing. And you'll even see it a lot on like content creators, comment sections, like, oh, you've really changed. And I don't know if I've necessarily seen comments like that. And I don't, I don't really care what other people think like i'm here living my best life and authentically sharing myself my story with you guys and some people are gonna like it and resonate with it and some people aren't and i just like don't have it in me to care anymore all i can do is like be the best most real version of me and some people are gonna resonate and love and and like feel seen by that and some people just aren't and like that's okay 
I can all I can do is be true to myself and stick to the reason why I started doing this in the first place, which was to find a community and build a community and help people learn to love and accept themselves whether they're like me or not. And so I think change is inevitable. We are all constantly growing and changing and we should be. That's kind of like the evolution of life itself. We're all supposed to be constantly moving forward. So I don't think change is a inherently a negative thing. And I think it is, a, is something that is inevitable. And if there's one thing that's true in life, it's that it's forever changing. So yeah, I just felt like, let's sit down and talk about my changes. So one thing that has also been a constant in my life is that I'm an overshare. This is not just on the internet. This is Molly in general. I overshare. I, I've always been an overshare and I recognize that it is in certain ways a character flaw of mine. And I've really worked over this last year to change that again, both in my personal life and on the internet. And it's something I told you guys I was going to try to do um, around this time last year. And I'm really proud that in many ways I have, and it, to be honest, has not been easy. Building that balance boundary, keeping certain things just for myself, it hasn't been easy at times. When I see the comments of confusion, like, wait, where does she live? Wait, what's up with Adrian? Like all of those questions. I want to be like, oh, let me tell you the whole dynamics of my life. But then I'm like, no, like it's okay for people to not know every detail. It's okay for people to have a bit of confusion about things that frankly don't concern them. And I'm really proud of that. And I love sharing and that's why I'm an oversharer and always have been because I love sharing because I think that sharing is how we break down walls and how we build bridges in society and how we create change. And so I'm never going to completely build a full boundary because I don't want to, but I've built enough of a boundary that I felt like I've had some some semblance of privacy in my life. And again, this isn't just something I've implemented on the internet, it's in my personal life too. And it's been really hard, but it's been really rewarding for me and my mental health. And I appreciate you guys who will see people's peppering of comments and constant questions and be like, actually Molly told us she just doesn't wanna share certain things anymore. And like, you should respect that. And like, I really appreciate you guys, but I also completely understand the people who it's been an adjustment for because I have been so open and I have, like open my wounds and my soul to the world to peek into. And I've pulled back some of those layers and um, kept them more closed. And that's hard for you guys to get used to and I understand that. So I, I don't mind, or I at least understand why people have still kind of poked and prodded, um, but I also really appreciate that you guys have respected me in many ways, so thank you. I think something else that's really changed, I don't know if this is just a part of getting older or if this is just something that I have had a shift with, but I have fully 100% surrendered to the fact that life is just hard. It just is. Sometimes those challenges come in moments, they come in days, they come in weeks or months, or even frankly years. And I think we've all had very challenging few years and I think we're all in for a few more. And I've surrendered to that. And surrendering and not fighting the hard feels so good. Just being like, you know what? It's okay that life is hard right now or that today is hard or that this conversation I'm having is hard or this moment in this time is hard because it's not always gonna be. And so I can just live in this challenge, accept it and grow from it. That's felt really good. And I think a lot of my personal struggle with, with sadness or moments of depression is in trying to fight the hard. And learning to just accept it has made it a lot easier. And the other thing that I've realized is a lot of my anxiety comes from not knowing my future. But the reality is um, I'm not a psychic, I don't know my future, and most of us don't. Uh, and it's debatable even whether psychics do. And so surrendering to the fact that I, I don't know my future nor do I control my future has lifted this huge weight and I'm not perfect I'm not saying I no longer battle my demons my mental health demons I do but I on a deeper level understood why and that's released a lot of it for me and just surrendering to the higher powers whatever spiritual belief you hold just surrendering to it and being like you know what my god will catch me you know like the universal energy will guide me and catch me I don't have to know or control my future. I just have to live in this moment. And that's been the biggest gift I've given myself. 
I've dealt with a lot of personal crises recently that again is something I may choose or may not choose to share at some point in the future. I think certain parts of what I've been going through recently I will definitely share with you guys because I've learned so much from it and would like to share with you. And then certain things I'm like, you know what? That was a crisis that I can kind of just keep to myself because there's no real learning lesson in it for me, so there won't be for anybody else either. So why expose that part of my trauma, you know? And so anyways, I've dealt with a lot at once. I had this kind of avalanche landslide the last two months of 2021. In ways, a lot of it was very similar to the avalanche that I had dealt with the year before at the end of 2020. I made a very emotional video about it and I was really struggling. And this time I was dealing with a lot of similar challenges and in many ways even bigger ones. I dealt with it so differently. I was calm, I was collected, I was in control, I was not having panic attacks, I was still able to eat, which is something I really struggle with a lot when I am in a crisis. And not only did I notice it, but like my family, my loved ones, my my team noticed it. Like I called my manager to be like, hey, update on a crisis in my life just so like you and the team are aware of what's going down with me in case I need to like pull out of something or change dates or whatever. And he was like, Molly, like something has just changed in you. Like we're all noticing it. Like you're just calm in the face of these storms you're living through right now. And I was like, you know what? Thank you for noticing. Cause like, I feel the same and I don't know what it is, but like, I just feel in control and I feel like I can take control. I just am really proud of that. And I know it might not always be that way. This might just be the season that I'm in. Like I just have some Holy Spirit running through me that is helping me right now. And it might not, I might not be like this always, but it feels really good to be like this right now. And I'm super grateful. I also wanna share something that definitely um, changed my life in a big way um, outside of just not working on the weekends building a slight boundary to those in my life and on the internet by not oversharing all the time. Um, something else that's made honestly astronomical difference that I could have never expected was seeking proper help for my hormone imbalances. I have mentioned this, I mentioned it I think in this video, but I haven't really talked super in depth about it. Um, I've dealt with pretty significant hormone imbalances for most of my life. I started getting ovarian cysts at 15 and it is a pretty regular occurrence in my life and it's been a problem I've known I've had for over 10 years. To be honest, other health issues that I've had have felt bigger and um, more pressing. Mental health issues I've had have felt bigger and more pressing. Life gets busy and I don't think I really understood the true impact that hormonal imbalances make outside of just things like giving you ovarian cysts or whatever it might be that you system like symptomatically experience. You have hormone imbalances and you have put off seeking more in-depth help, please do it. I finally took the steps. I'm working with an incredible team that combines both Eastern and Western medicine. They have me on a whole host of supplements that work with my cycle. So I take certain ones at certain times in my cycle and certain ones at other times. They did an extensive blood test on me. Um, there was literally like pages of data that went into like every little detail. Um, it's, a, it's a clinic that specializes in women's hormone treatment. The gynecologist also has me on a prescription progesterone cream. Uh, because my specific imbalance happens to be that I'm low in testosterone and progesterone and my estrogen levels are normal. And I take the progesterone cream twice a day during the last 14 days of my cycle. And oh my God, I, to be honest, think that this is a part of what has contributed massively to the reduction in my anxiety and to my ability to be stable and clear headed during crisis. From month one of using the hormone replacement cream, unbelievable. I feel like a different human. I feel the way anxiety medication made me feel. Like frankly, I feel the way SSRIs made me feel. That's how different I feel. And they told me that that, that is how I would feel. They told me like, I think a lot of your anxiety and irritability and stress, like all of those things are gonna reduce. Wow, they have astronomically and I have not been on SSRIs for a year and a half now. It was difficult, but like, with this, oh my God, like I just feel so different. So I really encourage you, if you have dealt with hormone imbalances and you've just given up seeking help, please don't stop. Please find a clinic that specializes in hormone therapy and hormone treatment because that has been the biggest gift that I gave myself this year. Um, and yeah, I did not realize the impact living with a 
dramatic hormone imbalance was doing to my everyday life. Would recommend. Um, I, I will also mention one of the supplements they have me on is one for anxiety. I'm going to insert some B-roll at the bottle and I'll link the name down below. If you can get your hands on that product, I definitely recommend it. I, again, have a whole list of supplements, but I'm not going to like recommend a bunch to you because it's personal to me. Like those are the ones that my medical team handpicked and selected for me to take and what doses. Um, but I just wanted to mention that one, maybe look into it, maybe talk to your doctor about it. If you struggle with anxiety as well, that one might help you too. It's funny, in certain ways, I feel like I know myself more than ever. And in other ways, I feel like I have no idea who I am. If you think, if you look at me and you're like, wow, Molly's really got her life together. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I don't and nobody else does either. Some of us are just better at faking it. <laughs> like, I've realized nobody has their life together. None of us do. Nobody. We're all just walking around, one foot in front of the other, trying to make it happen, trying to make it work, trying to get through to the next day and figure out the next situation. And we're all on our own path. And there's no point in comparing and contrasting our path to somebody else's because it's just way too harmful to your own mental health. What they're doing and what you're doing, it's nobody else's business, you know? And again, I, I think another part of getting older for me in particular has just been about realizing like, I don't have to have myself or anything else figured out I have to be who I'm gonna be in this moment and if one moment I love dressing in fun colors and being vibrant and vivid that's who I'm gonna be in that moment and if in another moment I just want to be a gray lump I'm gonna be a gray lump and it doesn't mean I've lost myself in that moment it just means I'm being myself in that moment and I think when I was younger and I think a lot of younger pe people feel this way like you feel like you know everything you know, you feel like you're grown. When you're 18, you're 19, you're 20, like, I'm grown. And the older you get, the like, more you realize you don't know anything. It's like when you're young, you're just like, yeah, I got this. And then you're older, you're like, I do not got this. And like, that's okay. So that's been really good. I used to be really scared of getting older. I used to think my youth was everything. It's funny, because I didn't particularly have a great youth. Like, as you guys know, I struggled a lot with bullying and my mental health and going blind. And I moved to schools a lot. And and I certainly faced a lot of challenge, so I don't know why I thought that youth was everything. And don't get me wrong, I certainly don't like the idea that I'm going to be 28 next month. Like, I'm not living for that number. But also, my late 20s have been nothing but good to me. I have, like I said, grown so much in this last year in so many ways that I can't even begin to fit into this video um, or express. So my late 20s have been really good to me in that way. It's not like my late 20s have been easy. They haven't, but the hard that I have faced this year is part of, so much a part of what's contributed to the great deal of shift in perspective and just being that I've experienced. And um, that growth and development is just such a great feeling. And I've always heard from older people like, oh, I love getting older. You'll, you'll realize as you get older how great getting older is. And now I feel like, I, I get it, I'm at that place. You stop caring so much, you just let go, you surrender and you just be. That is the biggest gift, it's a great feeling. If any of you are scared of getting older or if any of you are older and you haven't had this shift yet, like again, don't compare yourself to my path. Your time will come, you will get there. And I'm really excited for you to get there and I hope you're excited for that too because you deserve to be excited for your future and not be scared of it. And that's how I feel right now. I have a lot of unknowns ahead for me, but instead of fearing them, I'm excited and I'm embracing the hard that comes with the growth I have ahead of me. So that's it, that's it. That's all I want to talk about. Molly Rambles is done, she is complete. Um, but I, if you stuck with me through this video, I appreciate it because I know it probably wasn't like the most interesting or riveting but uh, it was something that I felt I needed to do and express for my own self because this channel is as much for all of you as it is for me. It's an expression and um, an experience of my own life and I have changed so much from the 20 year old girl who sat down and filmed the first video in her parents' house. And I'm really, I love looking back on that and seeing all the hair evolutions and the fashion evolutions and the growth of me in my 20s. This is just the next chapter and the next moment in that. So thank you. Until next time, you can click right here to watch this video or you can click over here to watch this one. Bye.